So everybody, why are so many photographers shy, do you think? Do you think it's got anything to do with the fact that we can spend all this time hiding? We get to hide. We get to hide behind our camera and hide from the world. Do you think there's any merit in that? I do. Let's talk about it. So if there's one thing that I have found in common with so many photographers, it's not true for all, and I suppose it's not true for many of us who are on YouTube, but you might be surprised to find out that a lot of the people who are on your YouTube, well, they're not faking it, but we're kind of having to perform. We're having to play a version of ourselves in order to make all of this happen. Now, there's a video I once watched by Peter McKinnon, which was something along the lines of, am I actually as upbeat and as excited as you see me here on screen? And he said no, when he answered that question. And then, strangely enough, and it's partly what prompted this video, I was watching Thomas. He was talking about the fact that he just bought a Hasselblad camera to help him further his photographic brilliance. And he talked about the fact that he hadn't videoed himself using it in his hometown. And this is something that I didn't know. I've been watching this guy for, I don't know, three or four years. He can't film himself in front of other people. He just can't do it. He sort of shivered and shaked and it was like, I can't do it. So what's really interesting is shyness, I think is pretty across the board for a lot of photographers, not all. And at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're playing a role. We're playing a version of ourselves to get by. So how did I force myself into going from one of the shyest people you could possibly imagine? And I was so shy by the time I was 18, please try not to laugh. I even struggled to ring up to order a pizza there's two things to laugh about there. Well, not laugh about, but one, yeah, I couldn't do it. And two, yes, you had to ring people to order stuff. You didn't just use a mobile phone. There weren't any mobile phones. Anyway, I was that shy. And how did I overcome it? Well, the first thing that I did to break out of my comfort zone, and this is really all that you have to do. You just have to break out of your comfort zones. The first thing that I did was I set up a market stall and this meant me putting up my pictures on temporary walls, putting them in front of people, and then having the general public scrutinize my very personal and private creations, which is what they were at that time. I had no experience in them being out in the real world. I had no idea if anybody liked what I created. And so to begin with, I was putting them up and I was pretty much standing at my stall sort of like this very scared and it took me about three or four visits to that market camberwell market if anybody wants to know who's actually in melbourne it took me a few visits before i kind of got used to putting my work up in public but it was terrifying to begin with so what you have to do is just simply push yourself push yourself into situations thing that helped me evolve was, would you believe, portraits and weddings. So once I was at markets, people started to see my work and they wanted to engage me. And of, of course I said, yes, this is what I want to be. I want to be a photographer. So I took on the work and that forced me 
to talk to people, to engage with people. If you're going to get the best results out of people, well, you actually need to talk to them and you actually need to be outgoing and gregarious so that you can often draw out shy people. I tell you, it's not much fun having two shy people at a photo shoot. You're just going to sit there quietly looking at each other, sort of like scared rabbits. And that's what it would look like. So in order to get the job done, you just suddenly had to be a big personality and get people to, to work in front of a camera. And basically it was whatever it takes. I also have done my time with weddings. Over the course of about 20 years, I did about 100 weddings. The reason that I didn't do more is, I'm so sorry, but I didn't really enjoy them. And uh, the, the reason I didn't enjoy them is because they're very similar. It's the same thing. And then in the end, I had a family and uh, my family started now about 10 years ago and weekends just became too difficult. But what's amazing about weddings is you are wrangling sometimes up to 100 people, maybe even more. And that's pretty difficult to do. So you have to be a very big personality to wrangle that many people. This is totally fine. So just um, close your mouth for me, chin down slightly, slightly to the right, very slightly, uh, head to the right, yep. Yeah. Rotate head to the right, oh, yeah, lovely. And crossing the arms a bit more. Oh, the arms crossed, look, that's a new one, I like it. Okay, uh, rotate head left slightly, just a smidge. So weddings are an, an outstanding way. Weddings and portraits are two different types of ways where you really have to push yourself to either move a very big herd of people or to elicit the best from your subject. You can't be shy and retiring and just waiting for stuff to happen. So really, that's my experience in how I overcame my shyness. I literally just put myself in the hot seat and that was the only way that things were going to happen. My advice to you is to do exactly the same thing. Perhaps start with family members to begin with. Don't put yourself in a paid, serious position to begin with, because if you do, you, you, you just wouldn't want to break your brain on a big day like that. I just practice. I mean, I always say with anything new, the first time you're doing it, just to do a two or three practice runs beforehand. So there you go. You're shy and you want to be a photographer, just get out there and do it. And there was a point for me, and I just want to let you know this, there was a point for me where the anxiety that I would feel before a shoot which was very real, and sometimes depending on the size of the shoot, it, would, it, would, uh, it could start five days beforehand as it was getting closer and closer, and then the night before I couldn't even sleep. It's, it's terrible. But there literally was a time, probably in sometime in the last 10 years, probably around 10 years ago, where finally that anxiety disappeared, and now I can do these shoots with just a, a nominal le level of uh, being on my toes, but I'm not scared, completely scared. And um, it's nice to not be completely scared. And, 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 I, and I'm confident and I know what I'm doing and I feel good about it. But don't think there's anything unusual in you if you're feeling really scared before a big shoot. Completely normal and you can completely get there. I got there eventually, took a while though, took a decade or two, so that's okay. All right, I'd love to hear from you. Is doing a shoot terrifying? And do you have any more questions? And how does it feel? How, how does it work for you? I'd love to know. It has been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here and you'd like to see me again, please subscribe, please share, it makes us all smarter. Please like, helps get the word out there. And if you want to see some more of me right now, you can click on the Matto and Photography just down there. There's over 200 episodes you can watch right now. All right, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go with how I started taking photos here on my little Z50. Doesn't that look cute? There it is. Oh, off we go.